Today we're continuing our TrackMan series focusing on carry and total distance. I've got Jackie here to provide some insight. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahola, Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Jackie Johnson, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today we're continuing our TrackMan series, uh, today focusing on carry and total distance. Um, probably the most uh, attractive and attention getting uh, data points that TrackMan offers for golfers, but there's more to it than just how far you can, you can hit the ball. And so Jackie, master fitter at Second Swing, uh, you are focusing on carrying total distance with every fitting, I'm sure, but it's not just in the same way that, you know, the golfer that comes in is like, oh, how far do I hit my seven iron? How far can I hit my driver? There's more to it than that. And so I kind of want to get into the difference between carry and total. So is there one of them that you prefer to look at or prefer to measure? And why is that? Well, I think it definitely depends on the club, but more often than not, we're going to be looking at carry okay. uh, more than total. Just because how far you're carrying a club is more often than not more important than actual totals. Okay. But they, they go hand in hand. I mean, when you're talking about carry and total, you know, if I carry a club 140 and the total distance is 160, we got a 20 yard rollout. Right. So there's, you know, there's different trackman you know, depictions on what we want to measure. So with a lot of that, spin's related to that, right? Mm -hmm. right. Launch is related to that. Um, how well we hit the ball, so smash factor, ball speed, those mm -hmm. are all in relation to those distance measurements. Yep. So I think, you know, a lot of people that are getting fit, care in total is basically all they really right. know. Right, that's how they. That's the number they're looking at. It's the first yeah. one that they, you know, their eyes are set on when they look at the track, the screen here, like a total distance for yeah. that club. But all these other numbers, and that's how the series is what it's about. It's yeah. how each of these, you know, data points kind of factor into the overall fitting. Um, but I think what you mentioned about rollout is important, and we'll have a demonstration on that. But then the other thing too with carry distance is, especially off the tee, those obstacles out there. Yep. It's more important to make sure you carry those than to hit it past them, right? Yeah. Because you might be able to roll a tee shot past a bunker that's 250 out there, but if you can't clear it, that obstacle is very much in your way. Well, it's important to know both. I think that's what we're gonna find out here is, you know, some people, they, they really want more distance, whether mm -hmm. it's off the tee, whether it's with their irons. Yeah. And so if you know that my mm -hmm. seven iron is going to roll out a certain yardage, but my carry is another yardage, yeah. then I can always play to that right? right so i think that's what this is all about is just demonstrating okay there's different types of club heads we know that so whether it's you know a blade or whether yeah. it's a game improvement uh they're gonna have different lofts so yeah. you're gonna have different carry yardage versus uh different total yardage mm -hmm. and as long as you know what those are you can play to you know that specific club yeah. and, and what it's made for. Yes, I do wonder how many people when they say like, I hit my eight iron 140 yards, was that total or is that yeah. carry? And I, I mean, there's a lot of people that maybe don't really factor either one of those in. It's just, I hit my eight iron 140 yards. Well, I would say most is? people are saying total. Yeah, and I, I think I, so too. Uh, but then it's, that becomes a question then with the stopping power. Well, what's your carry distance to that club? And can you carry a bunker that's 132 at the front of the green? Yep. That's the question. and. Another piece too that Thomas likes to harp on is the different playing conditions out there. Yep. Um, because a lot of times in Minnesota, springtime, the grass, it can be a little bit soggy. That ball, that we, the total distance you get in here won't be the same. You're not gonna get the same rollout in the environment that TrackMan sets up to what you will on the golf course. And so depending on firm or soft conditions, your total distance will be very different. So there's a lot of things to factor in and that's why I think carry distance can be a little bit more informational how far you carry your club will be more consistent course to course uh, as well. So we have a demonstration planned here. You're gonna hit a couple different seven irons, is that correct? Yes. And then they're just different lofts and basically to kind of show why carry and total can be different, uh, but they can tell you a story too. Yeah, I think uh, we're gonna hit a couple different uh, type of club heads with different lofts and maybe a different ball or two to okay. kind of demonstrate how you can get different um, carry distance and total distance just with a ball as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll demonstrate that and, and see what the numbers look like. All right, let's go. There you go. Oof, okay.
All right, so got a comparison here of a Pro V1 and a Super Shock. You hit your Gamer T200 iron, Jackie 7 iron. Yep. And so kind of tell me how you break down these carry and total numbers. That's all we have up on the screen here. Yeah. Um, so so um, first off, my when I was hitting the Pro V1 with my Gamer, uh, had a couple not great hits yeah. even on that screen, but you can tell right there, plus minus 2.9 on consistency on carry, and then plus minus 3.1 on consistency and carry. Not too bad. Uh, so consistency is a little bit better than that super soft minus, plus minus 4.3 on the carry with the super soft and plus minus 6.5 mm -hmm. on the total yardage. So what that really means is, you know, how consistent are the ball strikes okay yeah. and how consistent if i had to guess the other numbers on track man with spin and um you know the launch angle yeah. and and that that's going to be in that same consistency range yeah so typically if you see that plus minus and carry in total it's really going to relate to the other numbers yeah uh but so that's kind of a what can you expect type of number yeah and so i mean you're so basically your Pro V1 shots were more similar shot to shot, right? Yeah. Um, is kind of what that's saying. And well, then, and there's just a little bit more stopping power for sure. Um, probably got, too, yes. got a little bit more spin, a little bit more height in relation to carry to total. So stopping in 12 yards versus, you know, you have 15 on the super soft. Yeah. So, um, you know, typically if I was, you know, if I would have been hitting the Pro V1 a little bit better, uh, put a couple better swings on it, I would see that, that you know, Reality probably closer to 145, uh, so about 10 yards of stopping power is usually what I'm used okay. to. But I definitely expect the super soft to be what it is, a little bit hotter off the face, um, so a little bit more ball speed is definitely what would have happened there. Okay. Um, just because you got that extra three yards of yeah. carry, so hit it a little bit better. But um, it did roll out more. Yeah. Um, so it's probably a little bit lower launching as well. Um, and lower so. spin. Yeah. So we're kind of, it's, it's, it's funny because we're like taking these two, we're focusing on these two data points, but it, it does tell us a lot about the other ones too, the other data points that we're not really focusing on today. But yeah. um, you did mention kind of the key point here of, of kind of stopping power or rollout being 12 yards um, with the Pro V1 or almost 13, and then you have 14 plus with the Super Soft. So a little bit more stopping power. But now we can get to the different clubs, which is going to be kind of a bigger difference, I think. Yes. Um, because you have... The Epic Forged, it's a very different construction and different loft than your T200, so we should see some big differences between the distant num distance numbers there. There's about four degrees less loft on okay. the Yeah, uh, so we should see Callaway. a pretty significant difference there. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Getting a little bit more warmed up now. There you go. Wow, that one was crushed. That was hit good. So we've hit the Epic Forge 7 iron now. Yep. See those distance numbers go up, both carry in total, but break this down for me now in terms of the kind of stopping power, because we do see that separation increase a little bit here with the Epic Forged. Yeah, um, so obviously a huge difference from club head to club head, yeah. which is what we'd expect with less loft. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, in terms of just the ball with the Epic Forge, yeah, the, you know, that Super Soft just rolls out a lot. Yeah. I mean, Super Soft is really geared for slower swing speed players that uh, need a softer ball, but also need more distance, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be lower spin in, in yeah. every category. So that's definitely the case here. Um, actually, they're not too far off, I guess, in this. <laughs> you got about what? So you got, you know, what? 16? 16 to 17, about basically 17 yeah. yards of rollout with the Super Soft, and then about 15 and a half. Yep. with uh, the Pro V1. So there's, there's a, a, a small difference, yeah. but I think the, the point that you're, you're making, I think the bigger overarching point is the T200 versus Epic Forged. You gain some distance with the Epic Forged, sure. You, know, you gain, what, eight yards probably? Eight yeah. to nine yards? 
of carry, but that increases your rollout. So you have 16 to 17 yards difference between your carry and total with the Epic Forged Iron, and then you have 12 with the T200. Yeah. So that's another, you know, because you're keep coming in not as steep when you're landing on the green, more likely for that ball to roll all the way over yeah. and set yourself in a bad position. So that's uh, kind of the point we're trying to make here with carry and total is, you know, you can, especially with an iron, when you're trying to, you know, land the ball on the green and keep it there. Getting more distance is great, but the, the way these irons are built now is distance, 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 which is awesome. But it can be a problem if you have that huge separation between carry and total. Yeah. And your ball's landing on the green and then rolling off. So that's well, just something to consider. And I think that's, you can see that with the carry and total numbers both up there. Yeah, and that's why, you know, when you get those game improvement irons, whether it's, you know, steel or, or graphite, mm -hmm. typically with those game improvement heads, you're going to put something lighter in the shaft in your hand just because it can help with that extra launch mm -hmm. and spin. So you don't really see a lot of, you know, 110, 120 gram shafts in those game improvement irons. Just right. because uh, you're going to have a huge decrease in spin that, and, and launch that you're not going to be able to stop that ball. Right. So I think, and that's where you get that big separation. Yeah. And so I think, um, yeah, you know, some people would say, well, it's just a number on the club. You're right. It's all about loft. The reason why I hit this farther is literally because it's four degrees yep. less of loft. Mm -hmm. um, however, when you're talking about building your set um, and number of clubs in there, I think that's where it can get, you know, gapping can be start to be an issue when you have clubs that have not enough loft, yeah. right? So, and this is a great point of just like ball as well. With my T200, you saw a little bit more separation, but this is why, you know, I have a certain ball that I play. Um, used to play the Pro V1, definitely switching yeah. now that I'm realizing there's, a, you know, some different options for me to get more height because honestly, I don't really care too much about distance. I want to just know my number and know that it's consistent. And I think this is a really good indication mm -hmm. of like your carry yardage versus total. Like you should be more focused on right. that carry because that's the consistent yeah. piece to the so puzzle. So you're kind of suggesting when people are trying to lock in kind of or you know, understand their yardages with their clubs. Yep. Try to measure by the carry distance. Yeah. So that you know how far the ball is going to carry and land because from there, in a way, it's kind of out of your control. Once the ball lands on the green with an iron shot, the ground could be different, the, the conditions could be different, the green could be, you know, just aerated or it could be really soft, you know. But at least you know how far the ball is going to carry in the air if you hit it good, which is, I think, the point we're making here. So. I know your carry distance probably you're you're thinking about 140 yards with your seven iron, probably right. Yep. Because you didn't hit it perfect, but you hit you know when you hit it good, it's probably about 140 yards carry, right? Yep. So I think then from there, and then you roll out probably 10 yards, 150 total. It's kind of what you're thinking. So that's I guess the point here: carry distance, total distance. You like carry distance more as a fitter because you're you can then inform the golfer, you know how far they can carry an obstacle or what you know if there's a bunker in front, if they're off the tee, there's a hazard to carry over in, in the fairway to know that they can get that accomplished yep. and not worry about the total, which is rolling it out, which if you roll it out 280, but the hazard's 275, that's not going to help you out at all. No. Yeah. No, I think, you know, there's ad advantages to knowing both for sure. And I think as long as you know what your carry is with your clubs, that's going to just make you a better golfer. Because mm -hmm. I think, I, you know, you get a lot of people that come in here that are getting fit that they only focus on the total or only know the total and that's their first you know yeah how far do you hit this club well 150 well is that to carry or total well total so they have no idea what their carry distance is at all yeah so if you don't know that you know how far you're carrying all your clubs how are you going to avoid those hazards how are you going to avoid those right. you know certain parts of the green that you're looking to skip over like you can't because you don't yeah. you 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 don't know so right. i think that's where yeah we come into play of making sure the golfers you know they know the difference between the two and, and that they can uh figure out those yardages so they can be better absolutely well jackie thanks for joining for this uh this kind of unique test here but again carrying total distance they're just a kind of a small part of everything that trackman offers at second swing in the tour van fitting so Golfers, make sure you come in and get fit.
Uh, make sure your game's completely dialed in with all of the TrackMan data points that we're discussing in this series. And uh, ultimately, you're going to be playing better golf and shooting lower scores. Jackie, thank you again for your insight today. Thanks for having me.